Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about something called an array. Now, with all things developer related, an array is just a fancy term for a list. That's all it is. We're just going to create a list of variables, maybe a list of strings, booleans. We can make a list of lists if we wanted to. And in some languages like Python, we even actually call it a list, but in JavaScript, it's called an array. So let's go ahead and make this bigger because I think we can do all of this without actually writing any code in a file. And so an array is really, really easy to create. So there's a couple different ways of creating an array, but we could just say like ARR variable ARR is equal to, and then we have an opening and closing hard bracket. And inside of it, we put, uh, maybe I'll put my name and then a comma. And then because it's a string, you put quotations around it. And then I'll put my cat's name, Zephyr, and then a comma. And then if I wanted to, I could put uh, true in here as a Boolean. I could put false in there as a Boolean. I could put my age in there. I could put Zephyr's age in there. Now, none of this is mapped. So it's not really understandable what all this data actually relates to. But if we were to sort of change all of this and say ARR, no, no, let's not call it ARR. Let's call it names is equal to a list of names. We could say Caleb, Zephyr, Henry, and a doggo. Doggo, there we go. And just hit enter. And even if we try to access it again, we have a list here and it says in parentheses, there's four, that means there's four items. So we can see in here, we have these things called indices. These are numbers. It's your index value. So it starts at zero because computers start counting at zero. So zero, Caleb, one, Zephyr, two, Henry, three, Doggo. Now, not only can we loop through all of these different values and, you know, perform a certain action on them, we can grab each one individually as well. So we could say var Caleb is equal to names. And then if I wanted to grab one, I could just grab, let's say zero. Now, if that is a little confusing, you can always trial this out in your console as well. So it's names, and then you've got you know your hard bracket, and then your index number. So I want number zero. So this zero here is going to match this zero right here. And it's going to say Caleb. And if I wanted doggo, I would use index number three. And again, computers start counting at the number zero. To a human, the number zero means nothing. There's nothing there. To a computer, computers say, oh, the number zero? is actually a number because a computer doesn't understand the concept of nothing technically. It just understands that there's a number and it's zero. So it starts at the number zero. So if we wanted doggo, we would use the name of the array, hard bracket, and then the index number, and then a closing hard, hard bracket. And we could call this if we wanted to doggo is equal to, and then we could do whatever we want with doggo to, uh, let's do uppercase. Doggo in all caps, just like that. So that is how we basically create an array. There's another way of creating an array. We could do an array of numbers. So let's call it nums is equal to, and we can just give it a, an actual array. We call it array with a capital A. And then we could do 1, 99, I don't know, 23. And you can see that it created the exact same object. So, you know, you've got the hard brackets around here. We have indices in here. So we could do nums, this is going to get a little confusing, but nums two, if we did the variable name nums, and we put the index of two in there, it's going to map to the number 23. And so sure enough, it does, it maps to the number 23. Now, okay, let's clear that out. And let's work with names. If we type names, our console automatically tells us there's four items in there. What if we want to check to see if there are actually four items? Well, we could do names dot length. And this is a property on the names object. We'll talk more about properties and objects and methods and all sorts of complex things a little bit down the road. But for now, you can know that if you do dot length, you're going to get the total number of items in your array. And that's four. So that four here matches that four there. Now we also have a variable called doggo. And this is a string. So this is sort of outside the scope of this particular lesson. But we could also use length on doggo to get the total number of characters. So there's a difference here. The difference being names is an array, and this is where data types, it's really important that we know what data type we're working with here. Names is an array, and if we use dot length, that's going to get the total number of items in there. Whereas doggo is a string, and if we use dot length, it gets us the total number of characters in there. 
And just so we know what we're working with there, Doggo is actually D-O-G-G-O. -G -G -O, so there is five characters and that's why it returned five in here. Now, okay, that's cool. That's an array. So, you know, we've got two different ways of creating an array. We could do ARR is equal to an array with our items in there, or we could just do the shorthand way and use hard brackets. I like using the hard brackets, but occasionally I use A-R-R-A-Y just to be super explicit, depending on the code I'm working on. But, that, but that's really up to you. The way you want to do it, neither way is wrong, neither way is right. Okay, let's look at adding something to an array. So we have an array called names and we want to add one more person in here or one more name or maybe one more pet. Let's go ahead and say names.push and we want to push something into this array. So let's put the word parrot in there and you're going to see it automatically returned the number of items in the array. And if we type names again, we can see that there's Caleb, Zephyr, Henry, Doggo and the new one, parrot. And the total number of items is five. Now, if we wanted to get something out of here, well, we could use slice. So let's say we wanted to get uh, the first two items in here. We could do two items is equal to names dot slice. Where to start, where to end. Start at zero, end at two. And here we go, we get two items. We get Caleb and Zephyr. And so it just sliced that array and sort of just said, you know what, slice it right down this sort of center line here, almost center line. and remove Henry, Doggo, and Parrot. Actually, what it's saying is copy Caleb and Zephyr and put that into a new array called two items. Now, if we just wanted to get the very last item, and you're going to see this one a lot, we use dot pop. And this is the same across several programming languages. Let's clear that out. We have names in here and we want Parrot. So let's go ahead and create a new variable called Parrot is equal to names dot pop. And that's it. Just dot pop with parentheses around it. And watch this. Parrot is now equal to parrot. If we did type of parrot, this is going to be a string because it did not return an array. It just returned this last item in here. But more interestingly, what it did was if we type in names, it actually got rid of parrot. So what it did was it said, grab the last item in the array, actually remove it from that array and put it into anywhere. Now we don't necessarily have to store that in a variable either. We could do names.pop and this is not going to store the last one anywhere. So the last one currently is doggo. It returns doggo, but we didn't store it in a variable so it's not accessible to us anymore. And if we type names, we only have three names. And so this is a good introduction into arrays. Arrays get really, really powerful when we get more into loops. So for example, for every name in names, we could say, hello, my name is Caleb. Hello, my name is Zephyr. Hello, my name is Henry. We could write in three lines that over and over and over again. And if this array was 100 items long, we would still only have to write three lines of code. Versus having to right now say, console.log, my name is Caleb. And then console.log, my name is Zephyr. Console.log, my name is Henry. Console.log, my name is Doggo you get the point, so on and so on. We're going to talk a lot more about arrays down the road, but for now, you are now fully introduced into the world of arrays, a new data type called an array. And just as a quick recap, the most important thing that you can know about an array right now are the indices. So if we did this, we open this up, if we wanted to get Zephyr, which indice would we use? We would use number one. It's not the first item, because the first item is Caleb, it's the second item. And so we offput every number by minus one, because computers start counting at zero. That is the key takeaway here. So I would highly recommend that you get a little bit of experience writing arrays. You don't have to do a lot with them, you can just create a simple array with names and then maybe just get the middle one using an index. Otherwise, if you feel pretty comfortable with this already, let's head on over to that next lesson.